Imperial College a facilities test. A lot of hard work is happening. This happened at LSE and it's happened again and I actually can't believe. From 2017 to 2021, I've had a wild university journey. Three years of studying economics, one in Sydney and two at the University of York in the UK. And now I'm doing a master's at drama school. Soon my university journey is about to end as I finish my masters but before I make the transition of going from student vlogs Dylan to just Dylan and truly embarking on the mission of adulthood in a few months time I've decided to take on the task of reviewing every university in the UK Welcome back to the University Review Series. Today we are going to be taking a look at and reviewing Imperial College London and my goodness, it was intense. I, I don't know what it is, but whenever I interview people at their university, I always imagine it to go like, I like my uni, it's nice, it's chill, I'd recommend people coming here. I interview somebody from Imperial, there was some swearing involved. We've also got a university campus tour in person. We're gonna take a look at the university ranking for Imperial. You know, it's meant to be one of the best in the world. And then take a look at how hard really is it? Can it can it really be that hard? The good, the bad, all of that stuff is coming right up in today's episode. So Imperial College London is located in central London, in South Kensington, right by the Science Museum and surrounding areas. Now Imperial College London is known for being the only UK university to focus entirely on science, engineering, medicine and business. Now they claim on their website to have an international reputation of teaching excellence, like most unis do proclaim. And they also say that they're consistently ranked within the top 10 universities worldwide. So that is a very impressive claim to have on your website. So I had a little bit of digging, I went and had a little look at the QS World Rankings. And indeed, they were ranked 7th in 2022 in the worldwide rankings. But obviously, no cap, that's very impressive. Now on the UK University Ranking in 2022, according to The Guardian, they were ranked 5th, which is kind of very similar to their World Ranking. Um, so obviously, there's a bit of disparity there. And if you go there, you're going to go to a well-respected university. Okay, so when I ran my own university tier list, I actually gave Imperial a C. It was very controversial. People People did not like it, you know, I was, I was doing stuff like judging unis based on their logo. Finally, Imperial College London, but this one's gonna be a C because, I don't know, it's just, it's just there, you know, yeah. I gave it a C because at the time I really wasn't feeling London Uni, but my, but my opinion slightly changed a bit now. So just before we move on to the in-person campus tour, I had a friend who went to Imperial College London, he's very successful now, and I asked him for a few anonymous things about the uni. So I asked him how hard his degree was, and he said it was pretty hard. He told me if you put in the hours, then of course you're gonna be fine, but you have to put in the hours. And trust me, for him to say this degree's hard, best believe it must be really hard. So I asked him about the nightlife as well, because whatever university you go to, you want there to be really nice nightlife and really pop in nightlife, because it's a huge factor of why people go to university in the first place. Um, so I asked him about university nightlife at Imperial, and he said it was kind of dead. He said that the sports nights were really good, um, but often the uni clubs can be a bit iffy. But hey, he said at the same time, you're in central London like and he said that the course was taught well even if the professors necessarily weren't too good and with that being said that rolls us nicely into the campus tour which is going to include the interview that again I was super surprised at All right, so today we're taking a look at the Imperial College London campus. So at first up, we obviously got Imperial College seems to have their own taste Imperial food van, which I think is quite an interesting thing, you know, like hopefully the food's discounted. Well, we're in sort of the main square right now. So you've got the central library down, right down there. It looks very modern, high activity today. There's also a building around here. Look at this one around here. Look at the Sir Alexander Fleming building. So all of the buildings seem quite modern and you know what? It, this probably is the, one of the central places on campus. Very chill. Like, I, to describe it, it is chill. Um, can't play any ping pong at the moment, that's a bit disappointing, but I like the effort of having it there. But let's, let's go take a look in the central library, because going in the library is always a good way to tell what sort of, uh, what sort of university you're at. I'm going to be oh. sitting on that. Uh, seem a bit wet, I can't lie. <laughs> the 
Probably all. Uh, Imperial College um, a facilities test. It's quite good actually. I mean, if the sun was out, I can imagine it. It's quite nice. But right now, it's a bit of a weird thing to have outside in, in, a, in a, this, this March time. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased they're there though. I'm pleased. Right, back in the library. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. The reason why that's really interesting, it says next customer please to the uni library. It basically acknowledges us as every person, every student here as a paying customer. Yet you don't get the same sort of refunds as other customer places. Should we get food here? The library is so big, it spans all the way across there. There must be thousands of students here. Food? This is, I pay 16,000 pounds. You get a lot better graduation here then. Everything's closed. Other unis like York and stuff like that. It would get to like five o'clock and the majority of buildings would still be open, but a lot of them here, maybe it's because it's London or whatever, they're, they're actually closed. Cafe seems nice, library seems nice. Again, every London library, impossible to get into without a card. Overall, it seems quite nice. A bit, a bit, it feels a bit quiet. And the Science Museum is right over there. So it's nice to see and know that Imperial have got like, all of the stuff you'll need right close by, whether it be like shops or a sports centre. And it's obviously in Kensington. Now, for those of you that don't know, Kensington, you may have seen it in Monopoly. It's one of the nicest areas in London, one of the most expensive. And you can see by this Ferrari, you know, that's the sort of level we're playing at nowadays. Right, so we're going to take a look at the main, the main entrance and to see what's, what's kind of happening really. So right now we're going to head through to the engineering building and a few other buildings. There's the business school. And at this point guys, I would like to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can develop and enhance your creative skills. You can learn how to code, learn new languages, so many great skills to learn on there to improve your overall, you know, it might even help learning a skill to get into a university. So there's so many benefits of having and learning a new skill. I myself, I'm a teacher on Skillshare. I teach people how to edit videos, how to start a YouTube channel. Recently, I've been learning Spanish by Peter Hanley. I'm currently halfway through the beginner two course and I must say I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I could go to Spain and have a, have a conversation. So the quality of the courses on Skillshare, some of them are really good. And the first 1000 people to click my link down below or use my code will get a free month trial of Skillshare. So right now I've wandered into another part of the campus on South Kensington. You've got the business school there, you've got the Besimba building over there, you've got the electronics and uh, engineering building over there, and this massive blue building, which seems like a faculty building behind me. And one of the most striking things about this campus, every building, for example, engineering, you know, it's like 10 stories tall, it's huge. There's so many people and students here, and obviously a lot of facilities. The business school inside, we'll take a look in there. It feels very historic, it feels very modern, it feels like they got a lot of students, good facilities, and a lot of cool sculptures in there as well. Again, everything feels very quiet, everybody gets on with their day-to-day, -day. everybody's here to work and study, that's the vibe I get. No one's like chain-smoking outside the library or... But yeah, it's interesting, like, if I was to give my thoughts on it, it seems like a nice uni where you're gonna get a good degree, but a lot of hard work is happening. York has like a different feel, it's hard to describe unless you visit, but it seems lovely, but it seems like one of those unis that's just not for me. But let's take a look if we can get inside some buildings. This happened at LSE and it's happened again and I actually can't believe people's opinions on the unis. What? 
but I think in general all uni's quality is bad like even even at York I half the time I couldn't understand some of the lecturers you know so the campus I was adequately happy with the bean bags were a lovely addition just shame they were kind of ruined outside the library library seemed good good price food I was I was fairly content with it and obviously there's quite a lot of things to do in the surrounding area we had some nice food um, and it was quite a nice nice little area but it was a bit dead you know I said it there it was kind of a bit I expected it to be a bit busier and also a side note again you get to graduate in the Royal Albert Hall if you go to Imperial which is quite cool and again I guess we can conclude from that from that interview where the guy was like no no you're basically gonna fail if you come here I was like well, right, fair enough he basically said it's seriously hard because the professors aren't good enough and I feel like I did want to go into more detail on this because I feel like when I was at uni if somebody asked me and I wanted to be honest I would have said some of the, the professors are horrible at teaching like they're obviously really smart they're very intellectual they do a lot of great work outside of teaching but when they're trying to teach it's hard like the content they prepare is good and stuff like that and the course is good but t it's like they almost don't want to be teaching and I feel like some that's roughly the vibe I was getting from that guy so the teaching's not good but yeah whilst that was said I feel like that shouldn't put you off going to Imperial because I mean I've never met anybody who's been satisfied with the quality of teaching all throughout their course at any university but yeah, but I don't want to throw too much shade on lecturers, like some of them are really good, some of them are good, and there's some that are bad. You know, it's, it's a mixed bag like at school, like in life, like at any job. But yeah, shout out to all the good ones, and but yeah, I was genuinely shocked. Two out of two unis, I've asked four people, about two, over 50% of the reviews have been bad. Um, interesting times. But moving on to the student population, there's about 17,960 people at Imperial. To get into the university, it's very tough. There's very high entry requirements. Um, you need to get good grades at A-levels and you need to, I don't know, ace an interview and stuff like that if you truly want to go to a competitive subject. I think it's a very popular uni for international students as well because, again, like I always say, why would you not want to come to one of the biggest cities in the world to study? It looks great on your resume. You're going to have a great time. You're going to explore all of London. Um, which is a whirlwind in itself. There's so many networking opportunities, so many touristy things to do. You're going to meet people from all over the world. It's expensive. Yeah, and, you know, nightlife's expensive. You've got to have that dollar if you're going to come here, go out, have a good time. But it's worth it. London life as a student, especially in summer, it pops off. Uh, just a shame about how expensive pints can get at some of the nice pubs. And again, on the back of people, you're always going to find exactly the type of people you want to hang around with eventually. It might take some time to find them, it might happen really quickly. Just make sure you get in involved in loads of student clubs, get involved in the Students' Union, all stuff like that. And Imperial College London, from what I've seen, heard and spoken to people about, they offer lots of sporting opportunities. They're not necessarily, you know, a, a sick sporting uni. But if you did like sport, there's always going to be a big enough community around that sport um, to, to do well. Obviously, there's a lot more pressure when it comes to studying, I'm guessing, for a top uni. And again, they've got some pretty cool alumni, so the opportunities are ripe. But to conclude on the uni, obviously, it's very expensive to live around there. The tuition is very, very hard. You know, your degree is going to be tough. If my friend's saying it's tough, it's going to be tough. But then equally, it's going to be very rewarding because a tough degree is respected. Respect gets you a good job. Good respect and a good job gets you more money. It's a cycle. Eh, not a definitive cycle, but a rough cycle. There's all of the opportunities there you kind of need, whether it be on, on campus, at sporting places, careers. The campus was a tiny bit dead. Like at York, it definitely pops off more. It's a proper campus uni. Um, I preferred that. And when I went to LSC, I weirdly, obviously I went on a sunnier day to LSC. It's a bit different, but... I weirdly kind of preferred the LSC campus, um, only just, but I slightly did to Imperial. But when I was going around Imperial, it didn't put me off. I still thought it was very good. It just, you know, it lacked a bit of, felt very quiet, but it could have been the day I was there. And again, for a London uni, the facilities are top notch. I had a look at a few rooms. Um, couldn't get into a lot of them, but you know, everything I could get into, it was standard, it was, it was good. So yeah, I think overall, if I was going back in time, I would conclude that, Imperial, from what I've seen on that day and from what I've heard, is a good uni, but it wouldn't be right for me because, you know, the balance of study to play seems like it would be heavily on the study side. Not enough life, I wanted to get away from London, um, but it seems very good. So I hope you enjoyed today's review of Imperial College London. Let me know if you go there and what you think of the university. And I'll catch you again soon for another episode of the University Review Series. Please comment down below exactly what you want to see, what uni you want me to review. And if you ever want to send in any anonymous clips about your uni, hey, you know, I'm here for that. I'm here for that. But leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you again soon. Thank you. All up in my head,
that's so I be had Passing up the same, waking up the same All up in my head, that's just how I be had